Hi, it's Dyslexi here. Uh, I wanted to share a control tweak I started doing at the start of 2013. After getting a nice warthog throttle and stick, I also picked up some rudder pedals for flying in Black Shark 2. I've never really felt that rudder pedals were essential for armor flight, but I did recognize that they could help refine some aspects of it if I wanted to use them. I just didn't really feel the urge to try them. Now, as to Black Shark, obviously a full fidelity sim will benefit from such controls. So, after having these pedals under my desk, I decided to experiment with them in Arma. Might as well. The short story is that there are some really compelling reasons to have rudder pedals for Arma, even if you don't fly. Now, not too surprisingly, the first thing I did was try them out as a helo. This was rather interesting, as there were some aspects of Arma's helo simulation I wasn't even aware of myself, and it was only through the pedals that I discovered them. That's saying a lot. I've been flying these games since 2001. It's a big deal to discover something new after that much time. The obvious benefits for helicopters are, well, obvious. Rudder pedals allow you to finesse your orientation with much more granularity than tapping or holding keyboard keys ever could. This becomes helpful for gunnery, such as in the AH-9 with its fixed forward weapons, or other weapon platforms like the Ka-52, which have narrow arcs to traverse for their weapons. This is all obvious, it's a nice improvement, and there's not much more to say there. The next, of course, is turning. Being able to have analog rudder input means that you can do rudder-oriented turns more smoothly and introduce them as a more common aspect of your flight. This is just good all around. The last aspect is the tail rudder itself, or more specifically, once it's become damaged. As long as your tail rudder isn't completely disabled, the rudder allows you to correct for the yaw induced by a damaged rudder. In short, it doesn't really matter if your tail rudder is damaged, you can easily adjust for it. It's only when it's destroyed that the trouble really starts. Now, the interesting thing, the new aspect that I simply wasn't aware Arma modeled, is that when in a damaged tail rudder state, changing your collective actually causes your tail rudder to become more or less influential. Reducing collective causes the tail rudder to lose effect, while increasing it causes it to gain influence. You can see that here as I simply change collective power. The yawing is a result of this simulation and not of my pedal usage. It's neat to see this happen. So for helos, rudders are definitely worth using. I still stick to mouse and keyboard for the actual flight controls, but having a rudder for yaw works very well, and you know, that's not too surprising. I don't think I need to say much about how the rudder works for planes. If you're doing ground attack, you need it. It allows for far more precise gun and rocket employment. That's pretty clear cut. Now as to vehicles, those are an interesting usage. If your rudder pedals have toe brake axes, you can assign your vehicles forward and reverse to different toe brakes. The benefit here is simply a more granular way to control your speed. Normal Arma gives you slow, normal, and fast keybinds, while rudders, when used as gas and brakes, gives you a full range of speeds. This allows you to creep along with the infantry at a very slow pace, then smoothly ramp up or down as the situation dictates. It's a good usage and very intuitive. You also end up with some interesting possibilities, such as with this rating craft. With an analog control of your speed, you're able to creep towards shore with the engine barely making noise. Quite nice if stealth is a concern. The one thing that might surprise you is how you can employ these as infantry. I've set it up such that my toe brakes will cause me to do an incremental lean. Now, prior to this, I used track IR for leaning, and I still love it for looking around and moving within the 6 degree of freedom cockpits, but for leaning, rudder pedals, or more specifically the toe brakes, are awesome. Ever since I started using this method, I found myself leaning far more often and really taking full advantage of what's possible in Arma with the incremental leans. I highly recommend trying this out. It's so natural and useful, you'll wonder how you got by without it. One thing I'd like to see in the future, which I haven't really had a chance to investigate yet, is being able to use the rudders to toggle in and out of the step lean that Arma 3 has. Being able to control both step lean via the rudders and incremental lean via the toe brakes would be a fantastic method to get the most out of the movement improvements that Arma 3 brings to the table. I'm hoping either I'll figure it out, Bohemia will do something to support it, or someone from the community will come up with a clever solution. We'll see. Whatever happens, I'm optimistic. Anyhow, those are my thoughts on how you can get quite a bit of use out of a set of rudder pedals and armor. I don't think I can go back from these methods, they're just too natural, and they help provide a level of control that's not really there otherwise. As far as what pedals to get, I'm by no means an expert on the subject. The ones I have are CH Products Pro Pedals, but I've heard that the Cytec pedals are very nice as well. Either one is about $100, so while it's not a trivial expense, if you play a lot of Arma or have interest in Sims, I think it's worth the investment. 
If you try it out, I'd be interested to hear what you think. If you'd like to see more quality Armor 3 footage, I'd encourage you to subscribe to my channel and check out my site. If you're new to the channel, take a look around. I've been playing this series with my group, Shaq Tactical, for over 7 years, and we've got a ton of great gameplay footage to look at. Until next time, take care.